Thanks, Diana. That was beautiful. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Christ Our Anchor Presbyterian Church. And it's really good to see people out there now. And hello to everyone at home. Um, I'm Laurie Gardner. I'm just filling in for Pastor Jesse for some of the parts of the service, but she will actually be delivering the sermon this morning. So just an FYI. A um, couple things that I want to make announcements about. Uh, the first is that uh, Keith Maynard has once again graciously agreed uh, to uh, uh, organize a Navy football tailgate game party thingy. And he's got three dates out there. It is September 4th, October 2nd, and October 9th. And there's a sign up on the hopes and notes that comes out. And also, Keith, is it on the um, website? Is it on the COA website? Okay, well, Keith has sent out multiple emails. Anyway, for those of you that are here today and that you want to attend maybe one of those events, uh, let him know what is the best day for you. He's got two of the dates that almost have 20 people. He needs, his, he needs 20 people um, so that he can get the discounted rate. So don't forget about that. It's always a good time. We have a blast. Um, also, the other thing is that um, on June 27th, we are having an unplugged, COA unplugged event. It's going to have music, and you can bring a picnic lunch. It's 11 o'clock. It's going to be out here in the church grounds, and it should be a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to that and gathering and fellowship with everybody. And last but not least is Miss Debbie Barber, and she's going to talk to us about VBS, which is coming up not too far from now. So I'm going to let her speak. Good morning, everyone. As Laurie said, I am Debbie Barber, and I am the Christian educator here at Christ Our Anchor. And I am so excited. This morning, we had our final fun day school session of the school year, and we did some kindness rocks. And three of our five promoting fifth graders were there. So it was really special for my heart. And I just wanted to share that I know they're going to be in good hands with Miss Megan Preston and the youth group next year. But I was so thankful to see them one last time. And I'm holding, what am I holding? Anyone? A globe, the world. And this year for VBS, uh, next Sunday is our kickoff Sunday for VBS, for our vacation Bible school. It's going to be in person, outdoors. It's family centered. There are still a couple spots left. So if you have a family that has a child from newborn through rising fifth grade and you would like to sign up, reach out to me. I'd be glad to get you the information to register. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, I don't have kids, but what can I do to help? I would, we are looking for, we, I graciously appreciate all the supplies that everybody has provided this past week. We are good with supplies, but we have a team of about 10 to 12 volunteers that could, I would really love to provide a light meal before each um, session. So there is a sign up genius that has been sent out in the hopes and notes this week. Um, and if you have any questions, just contact me. And please just, the, the one big thing you can do is just pray. Pray for our vacation Bible school and the families and for our world because together we can make a world of difference. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Okay, sorry. Yes, and, and for everything else that uh, goes on here at COA, please check your hopes and notes, check the, check the website. It's updated and um, it should be able to get all the info that you need there. And now, without further ado, we're going to turn it over to our lay reader today, Ms. Judy Clark. Let us center ourselves in worship with the opening prayer in unison, please. O oh, come, faithful God, who empowers the weak, who encourages the faithful, who enlightens the blind, who emancipates the speechless, who enriches the poor, who invigorates the dead. O oh, come, faithful God, come and enable us right now to worship you and work for your kingdom, filled with your strength, your hope, your vision, your melody, your motivation, your word, your inheritance, your life. All this we pray through him who came to be our savior, who lives to be our Lord, who will return and fully make all things new. In Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Okay, so I'm up again. 
again, and I have the message for children and people of all ages this morning. So, I today's um, today's scripture verse has to do with Jesus being with his disciples and telling them that he'll be with them for a while. He came back to see them right before he ascended into heaven, but then he was going to be gone. But he would send someone back to take his place to be with the disciples for always. He was referring to the Holy Spirit. So I got to thinking and think about missing people, right? Um, I have, I brought a picture in. I don't know if you all can see. This is um, myself and one of my best friends. And she lives all the way in North Carolina. So we talk a lot, but I don't get to see her very much. So I do miss her, like physically miss her. I can't see her in person. Um, these are pictures of my grandkids. And those of you that know me, this is a really old one of Adeline because I need to get a newer one. Her mom has promised. But those of you that know me know that I just idolize my grandchildren. They are just like my world to me. So when I can't be with them, I'm sad. But I'm fortunate because I don't get to miss them too much because I see them an awful lot. Last picture. Oh, I, don't, I didn't bring my last picture, but I forgot to bring the other picture. I have another picture at home, and it's a picture of me and two of my other really good friends that I grew up with. And one of those people has passed away. She's been gone for about 11 years. She had breast cancer. And I miss her a lot. I miss her every day. But she always comes to me in, in different really weird ways, like she's made me some jewelry, and I try to wear that in her memory. I have a jacket that she had given me, and I keep it, and when I wear it, I think about her, and I've got the, the breast cancer symbol on the jacket, so it helps me to remember her. So I guess the thing, the point that I'm getting at is, um, and I, oh, I brought this too, because for kids, sometimes when you miss somebody, you bring like a snuggly right with you if you go for a sleepover or something like that. I was really horrible at sleepovers as a little kid. I didn't ever want to leave my mom and dad. So, But um, you bring a snuggly so you feel comfortable, you feel close to them. So my point in all of this is that there are people that we miss. There are people that we don't get to see as often as we want to. Jesus would be really cool if he would walk in that front door right now, right, and join us in our worship service this morning. That's always like, how wouldn't that be so cool? I know I talked about that last week. Well, that's probably not going to happen, but the really, th the really cool thing that we know is that the Holy Spirit is with us always. It's in our heart. It surrounds us whenever we gather in worship, whenever we're with people of like mindset, that all believe that Jesus is our Savior. So we have that to remember. So even though we can miss Jesus, we do have the Holy Spirit. And she is with us always in our heart surrounding us. So kids, I have at least two people. I should have had Garrett and Charlotte come up with me today. But you guys can just sit in your seat. So let's all say a prayer, okay? Thank you, God for keeping your spirit with us at all times. We know we can always depend on you and the Holy Spirit to keep us safe. In your name we pray. Amen. The reading today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 18 through 27, and chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, 
and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus answered him, those who love me will keep my word and my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words and the word that you hear is not mine but is from the father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you but the advocate, the Holy Spirit whom the father will send in my name will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. And from chapter 16, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said, he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The word of the Lord. I have decided to start these sermons the same way every week. I want you to breathe in slowly and deeply. Take a moment with me to do that. Breathe in and out. And remember the Holy Spirit within you this morning. I was very moved after last Sunday, the first Sunday in this series, by how many of you took the time to share with me how challenging or exciting it was for you to think about the Holy Spirit as feminine, calling the Spirit she during this summer series along with me and seeing what growth that could bring. In case this is your first week with us or you need a memory refresher here, we're spending the summer thinking of, together about the question of who is the Holy Spirit and then what are the fruits of that Spirit? Part of our collective time with this topic will include a lot of you hearing me calling the spirit she. We think nothing of calling God he, probably because of the Our Father prayer taught to us by Jesus, but teachings on the Holy Spirit are present in the Bible too. They're just not always so neatly spelled out for us. There is mystery with the spirit, not easy answers. There's invitation 
rather than commands. And I just want to take this teaching opportunity here to share with you that there are actually plenty of female metaphors for God in scripture. God is like a woman in labor, says Isaiah 42. God is like a considerate, comforting mother, says Isaiah 49 and 66. Like a mother eagle, says Deuteronomy 32. Jesus compares himself to a mother hen, says Matthew 23. And then the book of Proverbs has many, many images of wisdom as a person, in particular as a strong woman. You can't see her, but she's there for us to help us do things like to discern right from wrong and to strengthen our families and communities. And doesn't the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, doesn't she do the same things for us? Now, I say all of this to tell you that by calling the Holy Spirit she, I am not just trying to empower the women in our church. I am trying to empower and uplift all of us because I believe with all my heart that this gets out a truth right there in the Bible that we have been missing and which could make our walks with God so much deeper and closer and fuller. If we are all made in the image of God, well, then we have to broaden our imaginations for what God could really be to us. Now, some of you straight-A students may have noticed something in the scripture reading today, that the gospel reading refers to the Spirit as He. In chapter 16, it says when the Spirit comes, He will guide you, He will declare, etc. Darn, now does that completely disprove what I've been saying to you? No. And here's why. The original language used to write this uses a word for the spirit, the word pneuma. Say that one with me. I know it feels silly with me on recording, but say it with me. Pneuma. This word, like the Hebrew, Hebrew word ruah from last week, it also means breath or wind. And in Greek, the word pneuma is neuter, meaning it's not male, it's not female, it's neither one. Part of calling the spirit, she, is trying to expand our sense of these restrictive categories. If God's spirit is like taking a breath and opening our lungs, I believe that we were meant to be filled and expand rather than to be limited by the small walls and images and categories of the world. It's both and, not either or. So back to that story today in the gospel. It tells us something else very important about this question, who is the Holy Spirit? Jesus has gone underground at this point in John's telling of the story. The authorities have been trying to get rid of him for a while. They've been plotting and threatening, and they even incited a mob to stone Jesus in John chapter 7. So now he's laying low because the time is not quite right, but he knows the cross is coming. So he gathers his closest disciples together for one last meal. In John, he washes their feet, which astounds them in its humility. But they do ordinary things too, like eat and drink. And I like to think that they laughed and told stories. After all, how many of you can remember your last days with someone you loved who was near death? It's bittersweet. And much like the disciples, you probably didn't want to believe that the end of their life was really near. These disciples in particular hid behind a lot of confusion and denial right up until the end. They just couldn't bear the thought of Jesus leaving them after they had left everything to follow him. The journey just could not be over already. Also, much like the rest of us human beings here, they had a lot of questions. We know life is crazy and unpredictable, but we still want to know what to expect. Even my three-year-old Penny has begun to ask every night, Mommy, where am I going tomorrow? So you see, even down to a young age, we want to know how will things turn out? What's coming around the bend? So in this story, and John, this was a heavy time full of fear and questions and grief. And Jesus spoke right to that. He says that although soon he will be with them no more, somehow they would not be left alone. This passage is one that I read very often at funerals because it is immensely comforting. I won't be with you anymore in the way that you're used to, but I will still be with you. That's the message. 
I'm leaving you with peace. And it's different from the world's peace. I love how the message translation puts it with Jesus saying, I don't leave you the way you're used to being left, feeling abandoned or bereft. Jesus even goes so far as to say it's actually better for them, better for us, that he goes away. How in the world can he say that? If your loved one said that to you, wouldn't it outrage you? How could them being gone possibly be better? Well, in Jesus's case, it's because he is leaving us in body, but is sending us the spirit, who he calls the advocate. That word in the original language is paraclete. It means literally to come alongside paraclete. Jesus is leaving, but sending us this person who will come alongside us, this advocate. Think about what an advocate does in our world. She will never leave us. She will come to our defense. She will hold us up when we feel like nothing. She will be our champion when we have no fight left. When do you call people to come alongside you, to be by your side? maybe a sudden tragedy, bad news, or even maybe something good like a momentous decision or change. The spiritual writer Ram Dass, he put it like this, that when all is said and done with life's journey, we are all just walking each other home. I can remember I felt like that with the whole pastoral nominating committee of this church. They were by my side in this process. It was a good thing, but it was overwhelming and confusing. And when I finally did come here to COA, Jen, the head of that PNC, said she felt like that's what their call had been all along, to just welcome me home. But we all have those times, don't we, where we need someone to guide us and encourage us and help us along step by step. This advocate spirit shows that God is not just up there kicking back at a distance, watching us bumble and stumble our way through life with a bag of popcorn, entertained by our struggle. No. God sent the spirit to get involved with us if we let her. And she doesn't do it all for us, but instead she strengthens us to keep moving forward. This is what Jesus says we are left with when he goes. So we do not have to be alone after all, ever. We have an advocate. We need to hear this. We are longing to hear this. The disciples around Jesus in that upper room, they needed to hear it too. And also the first readers of John's gospel. It was the last gospel to be written, which means that those reading it were living 70 years after Jesus' death. And many of them had been expecting his triumphant, glorious return, his body back on earth to win them a victory. But it was not happening yet. It hasn't happened yet. And meanwhile, they were dealing with many difficulties and trials every day. They were being persecuted and facing real danger in their lives together. So this reminder was something they really needed to hear. This God who comes alongside them through the spirit. Maybe for us too, not just as individuals seeking God's presence in life, but as a human community, maybe we too would prefer a triumphant, visible, bodily Jesus. Someone who could actually stand up behind a podium and right the world's wrongs. But that's not what we get. Somehow, Jesus says we have the better thing this advocate. And then because the spirit lives inside of each of us, we are the ones to make Christ visible to the world. I've never been really fond of calling the Holy Spirit the Holy Ghost. And that's because this presence of God with us in this spirit, she's not haunting us. She's not just the memory of someone who is gone. She is fully alive in us. When we are confident that we have an advocate for ourselves, maybe we can be bolder to advocate for others in need in our world, people who need someone to come alongside them. The same spirit that Jesus preached about in his first sermon 
is the spirit that's given to us. His very first sermon, Jesus quoted Isaiah 61, saying, The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free. Jesus was saying what his ministry on earth alongside us was going to be all about. He would come alongside those most vulnerable. And now that he's no longer here, the spirit has empowered us to take up that ministry. However, I will say here, this does not necessarily mean grabbing a megaphone and doing some big political demonstration, though that might be a real gift for some of you. Coming alongside can be as simple as weeping with those who weep and laughing with those who laugh. Journeying with other people and allowing them to be themselves without judgment, without trying to fix everything. Coming alongside can also mean allowing others to see our own vulnerability. Remember that Jesus' disciples, they recognized him after his death because of his wounds. So too, maybe we recognize the presence of the Spirit in another person when we connect over the things that are hard and tender for us. Jesus gave us this special peace to the disciples and to us. He gave us this special peace, not so that we could retreat from the world and all its struggles, but so that we could enter more deeply into the world in courage and faith. We were never promised that it would be easy but that we would have this advocate by our side. A theologian and a writer named Frederick Buechner said it really well. He said, wherever people love each other and are true to each other and take risks for each other, God is with them and they are doing God's will. But here's where the rubber hits the road, where we remember that we are receiving this message and this call at this moment in 2021. Maybe a lot of us feel like in this in-between time, emerging from the pandemic, like we're walking out of a cave and into bright sunlight and we can hardly see. It's jarring. It's overwhelming. It's almost too much. How can we be expected to be an advocate for others when we can barely get ourselves back out in the world without second guessing? But we always have to remember This promise of the spirit, it's not a command. It is a promise. She is a promise. Her presence and her work in our lives, that's not up to us. It's a gift from Jesus. And we remember this relationship with God's spirit, it's always flowing both ways. We are filled with the love and power of the spirit so that we can love each other that much better. And We love each other in order to experience that much more of the Spirit's presence. It's just like breath, in and out, not up to us. Thank you, Jesus, for leaving us with that gift. to 
thank you, Diana, for that. And thank you for making me cry. So <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. Oh, well, I did. <laughs> so now is the time of our service that we raise our prayers um, to the people, our joys, and, and our concerns as well. So I would ask you to pray with me now as we go into this time of our worship. Holy Spirit, breath of our life, be with us now as we offer you our prayers. Spirit, we first wish to have you surround Alice Robeson and her family with your love and compassion for the loss of her dad, Sherry Chase, who is such a wonderful person um, and did so much in his lifetime. We also ask for prayers of healing and love for Ann Hatcher's friend, Helga, who was diagnosed with stage four cancer. Prayers for continued healing for Jenny, who's recovering from multiple heart surgeries. And prayers of comfort for Butch and Karen Rodak and Butch's brother, brother Tim and his family over the loss of his wife and the children's mother, Jan. I'd also like to raise up prayers for um, Susan Hansook, who is the sister-in-law of Peg Ferguson, who recently passed away from a long battle with cancer. Uh, she's with, with our Lord now, and so she's at peace. Also want to raise up prayers for Rick Link's colleague's wife, who's having surgery for cancer. So also, Holy Spirit, we want to raise up prayers of joy for birthdays, anniversaries, and graduation celebrations. Holy Spirit, we thank you, glorious one, for your support through the Holy Spirit, for you, through you, through the Lord our God, through Jesus. You are the wind that puts the wind in the sails of our life, and in all we praise you by saying the prayer we know so well. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to the conclusion of another time of worship together, let us be thankful as a community for God's presence among us. God the Father as God for us. Jesus, the Son of God, God with us. And the Holy Spirit as God in us. Let us take a breath and a quiet moment to ponder the ways that we have felt God's presence in the last week and pray for open, a fresh openness to this presence in the week ahead. May God's spirit move us to a life of kindness and generous love toward all that God has made. Amen. I want to close with a little meditation and exercise that I present to you from another pastor, Reverend Grace Lindvall in Charlotte, North Carolina. Humor me with this friends, close your eyes, steady your breathing, breathe in deeply, breathe out deeply, breathe in, take a long breath, we need it. Breathe in God's love for you, for it's all around you. Breathe in the goodness of God's promises and hold it, savor it. And breathe out. Breathe out your hopes for the world. Breathe in again. And as you breathe in, remember the moments when you have witnessed the advocate, the friend, the helper. Breathe out. Breathe out God's love into the world, the love that you have experienced. Breathe it out 
into the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.